Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to part two of Marvel Zombies X-Men Resistance, a zombie side game. So if you didn't watch part one for a reason, all I did was I went through the rule book, explained the differences um, of some of the new stuff that the Marvel Zombies and the X-Men Resistance version brings to the game. Um, I like new traits, things like that, stuff specific to this game. Uh, this video we're going to go over the tiles, the tokens, the game components, um, and like the trait cards. And then we will do a part three where we go through all of the actual miniatures and abilities. And that might be a little bit longer video to get through all of them. Um, all right. So without further ado, let's, let's hop into our token sheet. All right. So we're going to have a big, big, big giant token sheet here. We're going to have all our red doors here, which are broken. We have a blue door. We have some blue crates. We go to the other side. We have our green ones. So typically you use the red doors and the red crates for everything, but then you can flip them over um, and see they're all closed and all the token or all the crates are now red. So you can hide the different colored doors uh, or objectives. Then we have all our spawn points here uh, to get all red on the back. There's a one that says a one on in and exit. So where the starting spot is the last stuff that references the starting spot. Um, we have our elevator, we have our action token showing we've used them, we have our sentinel blasting hand. And if we flip it back over, we have our green to show that you haven't activated um, our sentinel hand. And then our zombies, we have a green and blue as well. And that's just to kind of show if you're setting up different scenarios, you can have stuff that doesn't activate until a certain time, so you have delayed spawn points. The outside of the elevator and the sentinel hand, oh, it's stuff's just popping out here. Um, is the new tile or tokens we have are glass windows. So these can be used in various parts of the danger room or the expansion um, just to show that there are windows that can be broken through. So I went through the first video we mentioned um, if there was a window you could see through is if a zombie can't see you any other way it will then treat all windows as if they're open and it'll start looking through windows if you can't physically see it will go through a window so we have broken ones and then we have yeah it looks like they're all broken yep so they're just broken tokens so they don't have any non-broken ones um and that's just to show that now that is a brand new entryway um through the map um, now is there a spot on here that shows actual windows or do you just put them wherever you would like? I believe you put them wherever they would like you to put them. I don't see a specific space on here for windows. Um, I was just double checking here. Door, door, because doors have handles, which makes sense. So yeah, I'm gonna guess it's these blue spots here on the board. Door has a handle, so you can put a door token on there, and then these are uh, windows. Must be looking into the building from the outside. Um, yeah, so we have some more on this one here as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, the only other time they've ever really used kind of a mechanic like that in Zombie Side was, that I can think of off the top of my head, was Toxic City Mall from Classic Zombie Side, um, or Modern Zombie Side, is they had doorways for their, uh, mall shops, which had, like, glass doors, you know, which are very similar in style. All right. Before we jump into the tile, we're going to look at some of our other stuff. So we have our brand new, uh, boards. So it has our experience meter down here. Has a spot for holding two trait cards and a bystander card, as well as our zombie card. Uh, spot for your tokens to keep track of your power. So if we take Magneto, we can set him in here. We have all these little cubes here we can use. You can have one keeping track of his health, one keeping track of their power. Um, if we get a bystander card, we can set them in there. What's really cool is because they can tip up so you can pop them out very easily um, as if you are replacing them. And the same thing is if we have a trait card, you can put those on this side. And again, it's really neat they made them so they can pop right out very quickly. So you don't have to like fumble with them. Um, what is also nice is these are all big enough to fit sleeved cards. Um, 
Let's see if I can grab one really quick. I have some sleep from the previous set. Um, so obviously this is a uh, zombie abomination instead of a bystander. But you can see I can fit a sleep card in there very easily. And I can pop that out very nicely. So that's pretty cool that they made these big enough to hold sleep cards. Um, yes, yeah, so you will get... It's really cool is you get six of them. Um, so it's enough to play a full six-player game. Very, very cool. Uh, and then, of course, we get the ring bases to go with those. So you have six new powers. I also love the fact these uh, bases and the symbols to show what color your character are, are different than the other zombie side game, um, the regular uh, core version, because then that way you can have all different colors. You can have six different players. Um, like, if you want to make some mega game, you can technically now have 12 players with all different bases. Uh, which is really cool. Versus having just the same colors repeated. Uh, then we have the dice. Which I'm not going to take out of this wrapper right now. But they're kind of little blood splotches. And then on the sixth side. Wait, it's the sixth side. No, the one side. Uh, so like critical misses. Which are really bad. Our zombie teeth. Uh, which are really fun. Just again, they're nothing incredible. Like translucent or fancy. But they definitely work for a little bit more premium dice. Than just regular pips. Um, all right, so that's what we have for those. Let's take a look at our tiles. We are going to get nine brand new tiles. I'm gonna see if I can zoom my camera out a little bit better. And then we will take a look at these. So here's our first tile. Um, so this is 10 R, because we have the first nine would be from the uh, base game, uh, which was Manhattan or New York City. Um, so I have lots of Avengers or New York locations. This is the X Mansion. So we're going to see a lot of X Men related stuff in here. Of course, we're going to have our spawn points in here. We're going to have our bystander spots when we get into these. Uh, now, this can work if either you enter into a door or if you break through a window. Um, so if you get into a window, like somehow if you got into this through like one of these other doors, a zombie could break in through a window and come after you, which is really fun. This is like our lounge type area. Um, I always love the detail on these boards. Um, I think they're a little bit better than traditional zombie side. Um, they don't do enough, I think enough where they're showing off too much like just X-Men stuff littered around there. But it's better than it just being like very blah. Like here's a, here's a chair in that. So it looks very lived in. Um, but there's that one. We're gonna go through, we're gonna go through one side of these personnel of Pokemon Wars. So we have tile number 11 which would give us uh, another park up there. I love that there's this big giant broken um, chunks of metal in there. Uh, like a wall just exploded. Uh, here's our elevator shafts. So if we have the elevator coat and we can put it there, you know, we're on this floor. Um, they can go into the pool, which is really cool. Neat little mechanic there, or uh, feature there, I guess. Uh, number 12 is we have the uh, library. Um, yeah. Heroes turning into zombies. Unknown virus devastation. Some medical books. Um, mutants not the enemy. Our mutants are the enemy. Um, yeah, some different stuff there. I don't know there's any Easter eggs I don't recognize. There's like our power area, but then this links into the another outside. So this is the idea is you can have oh, these combined kind of like this and go pool area. Or you could combine these together to make a big outside patio type thing. Um, definitely, definitely interesting. I mean, you could always have them go this way as well. You only have like a U-boat. Always different options. And we have some outside grounds as well. And this is tile number 13. This is our dining hall. Um, again, nothing like very x men specific about this. Which is, one hand is actually really good. The other hand is kind of like, I wish I had more like 
X-Men detail. Because it's nice because that way you can really use these for any type of zombie side game. And they'll fit in versus them having like specific... Even like the main tiles where they had like the Avenger building or Baxter building. Um, or Daily Bugle. Like right, it just has a sign. Other than that, it could really be anything. Um, there's our little kitchen there. Just find a bystander and a zombie in that one. We have, uh, weeding to the outside, our front steps. Uh, looks like our chandelier broke. Uh, I love there's a set of stairs here. So, this actually works as an interesting mechanic here. So, um, we have six zones here, and then we have the stairs. If you take the stairs, you actually have to interpret these as being 3D stairs. Um, so a character can't walk through these and can't see through this. You can tell that because they don't have one of the regular border lines in there. So you have to go all around the stairs to get to these extra rooms. Or if you take the stairs, you go up to the next floor. Um, it's just a way to also have a different access point than always being just the elevator. Um, there is a picture of the X-Men there. See if I can get that to focus a little bit. So it's Wolverine, Colossus, Cyclops, and I can't tell this Professor X. Yeah, I can't tell who the other two are without getting really close on it myself, but I don't think I can zoom in any better. All right. Tile 15, we have the other side of the outside lawn. So yeah, this kind of makes like more of a a themed building as opposed to just um as opposed to just being you know like here's not random tiles you can kind of put however you want you kind of almost want to put these in specific ways but you can do it however you want so here's professor x's office so we do get like his chair his wheelchair is all broken someone kidnapped the professor with a drug him drug him um but yeah definitely could add some more windows on the outside so again, these are meant to be kind of put together, something like that. Well, there's no doorway there. So that's the only thing. You have to watch how you line these up if you want to line your doorways up. So I'm not for sure which direction that's supposed to go off the top of my head to play around with it a little bit more. All right, we have the garage, though. The fun, fun garage. Just tile number 16. Um, I think these are very familiar vehicles of the anime series. So it's like Wolverine's Jeep, Wolverine, or Cyclops' motorcycle, and then Cyclops' car. Um, from based off the animated series, as far as I can tell. Um... There's some different technologies over here, which I don't recognize, immediately recommend it, recognize any of them. But that's definitely cool. Uh, the little garage can kind of, again, be off to the side, so you can, like, have to go outside the building to get to it, like, to the grass, which is kind of a fun idea, instead of always just having buildings connected. We have the Mega Fountain, which is, again, one of the fun things because you have to go around it. Obstacles like that are really cool. We have our sign for Xavier's school for the gifted youngsters. And then our last uh, tile on this side is 18, which is our greenhouse, which has just been utterly destroyed. Um, and then some gravestones, which is kind of sad, but as the X-Men, they usually have to bury their own. Um, so at least it's relevant there. All right, then we're going to flip them all over and look at the other sides. So these will form the underground. So this is the underground, the mansion. So there's our elevator we can come down. Um, we have some different laboratory rooms. We have a hallway you can go down. So in the hallway, you can kind of like have stuff off to one side or you can have them coming down to the beginning. So you can kind of like determine how you want the uh, underground to look like. In tile number 10, that was tile number 11, just in case anyone was wondering. So tile number 10, we have Cerebro itself. Um, a little control room. And then the idea is you kind of have put these something like that. A little control area, you can get through that door, but then you have to go around to get to that. But you could have alternatively, 
if you don't mind tiles, I don't know if anyone plays, but you, if you put tiles, like, off kilter a bit, you could do it like that. But you could also just do it like this as well. Like, it's off, instead of it being right next to it, gotta go down the hallway. Um, different options. What would the expansion be without tile number 12, the danger room? Um, I don't know if there's anything generally specific in there, just a bunch of, uh, things have been destroyed. Some claws, some lasers, it's really cool. Um, computer that's been broken. And then we have some of the labs. We have like a meg lab in there. This is tile number 13. Uh, some medical coats, of course. Some broken beakers. Some lasers. Power source, you know, different things there. Kind of the end of the other hallway. We have the X-Jet, the Blackbird, as it were. Um... Tile number 15. So that's really cool. We get like a big underground area. Um, also neat noticing on this is there's a door over here that doesn't have a door handle on it. So it's just an entryway. And then this one specifically has a door. That's the only two ways into this tile. So this kind of acts as a cool corner piece. Then our final underground tile is the war room. Which has a big X table. We have an X-Men costume up there. Uh, a couple of... Just the one doors up on the top two sides. And then the main hallway entrance there. Which again, having, not having an exit on uh, every single point makes the game really interesting. Um, I say you can't just always leave off of any of the four tiles. You have certain areas you can enter and exit from. Alright, the last three is we are going to look at the X-Mansion upstairs. We have tile 17... This is our main floor. So if you're taking the stairs, you can take the stairs to here and go around. Or you can take the elevator up if you'd rather do that instead. Um, or the elevator could go all the way down to the basement. Um, and yeah, there's just like kind of like a study room there. Someone was getting ready to play some chess. Someone got attacked over by the books. Um, nothing too spectacular on that one. So the last two are the really fun ones. Um... Kind of needs us to see like the patio all here on the outside. Um, these are the dorm rooms, so you can see that they made the hall like these look like they're way down at the bottom. So, if you want to connect these to another adjacent tile that had the outdoors, um, you could potentially connect them, you know. Something like that, and it would just be like, oh, you can't actually climb up there because that's a full wall. So it's kind of a neat little idea. Uh, but yeah, we have the X dorms, which are really fun. So I'm going to look at these a little bit more in depth. Um, see if we can figure out who every dorm belongs to. So here's just like a general study. This is the women's rooms, it looks like. So oh, let's see if I can just kind of zoom in and get this to focus a little bit better. Alright, so this purple room looks like it's definitely probably Shadow Cats or, or Kitty Prides. Um, just based on the color scheme of purple, also it's like a purple dragon, which is probably Lockheed. Um, that's my best guess. Thing. I might not have all these a thousand of them. I mean, I love X Men, but some of these are a little bit harder. Um, yeah, so this one's a little bit trickier. Just because I don't see anything that like, generally stands out. There's a yellow costume there um a teddy bear some other stuff it doesn't really like shout any particular character my first thought was maybe um like x23 you know possibly but i'm not for sure um we have this one right here uh so again i'm not really sure there's sandals a backpack um but yeah, it doesn't really like just shout out to me if I turn these this way, maybe. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily shout out immediately who that would be. Uh, this one here is probably Jubilee, being that we have the yellow, um, yellow trench coat and the rollerblades. So that's fairly obvious on that one. 
Um, this one down here, we have um, a bow and arrow set. Um, so my first thought there was this is probably like Moonstar. But the only thing that's weird about that or even X-23 is they're not in this game at all. So it'd be kind of odd to have artwork depicting characters that aren't in the game. So I don't know what other character, like X-Woman, would use archery. Uh, then we have, uh, we have a little room down here. Just, you know, a little talking room, conf conference room. Then we have this. This clearly looks like it's probably Rogue. Just based on the fact there's gloves everywhere. That would be my initial thought. And then the last one is we have a Katana, which I would guess is probably Psylocke. Um, yeah, so kind of interesting. Some of them stand out very easy. You can kind of see who they were probably supposed to be. Other ones are kind of a little bit more ambiguous. Uh, if you know who they are, hey, hit me up in the comments and let me know. All right, our last one then is the male dorm room. So we have a little mini Cerebro here, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, then we have our big room, uh, library, meeting room over there. And then we'll hop into the action. So clearly this one's Iceman. That one's fairly easy to figure out. This one has a bunch of weights. My guess is this is probably Colossus. Um, I thought I would have figured if it was a Colossus room, it probably would have had more like artwork and stuff, like a painting and an easel versus, uh, that, um, this one's a beast. It's a science lab. There's blue little fur or uh, prints everywhere. So that one's fairly easy to figure out. Um, this one should be Wolverine. Um, here's a picture of Cyclops and Jean Grey. Uh, he has slash marks everywhere. He has his red or his uh, orange and black jacket. Uh, the feathers in the next one there is probably Angel or Archangel. Um, very simple. Uh, this one has two swords and a cross. This is definitely Nightcrawler's uh, swashbuckling. is a little bit religious. And then the last one, um, I am not for sure on. Just, it looks pretty generic, blank. Everything's kind of broke down. So it's kind of cool to have all these different things. I, mean, I didn't see anything for Cyclops or Jean Grey. Being, like, two of the main X-Men. Um... But maybe they're sharing them. The only thing this has is it looks like it has some like burn marks or like a coke marks maybe. But I'm not for sure. So yeah, again, if you know that one, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think it is. All right, that's what we have for all of the tiles. Um, then we're going to look at the uh, traits here quick. So let me rejigger my camera a bit. So, we have these trait cards. Now, if you watched my video for the X-Men, or the Heroes Resistance unboxing, all of these traits are the exact same. We just get more in here. Um, so, there's three copies of each instead of two. They just added more because, again, that one's a little bit of a lesser set. Um, and then, the next video, we will hop and look at the characters, the spawn cards, the bystanders, the villains, all that, all that fun stuff. Let's go ahead and look at these. So there's three copies of each of these. We're going to start with Ambush. So this is a, this is always fun because it's kind of like the old equipment card. You could get a card you're like, oh, I'm looking for something good. Oh, I got surprise. So it's fun to walk in your zone and then draw another trait card. Um, we have True Grit. Uh, this card, when enemies move into your zone, perform one free action targeting your zone. This is kind of good, just like a preemptive strike on them. Unstoppable. Discard when attacking and spend one power. Enemies suffer minus one toughness to a minimum of one. So this could help you take out a brute with only one hit or take out uh, definitely one of the superheroes because they have three plus health. Uh... Courageous. During discard during your turn to spend any amount of power heal the same amount of wounds. Very helpful if you need to heal back up. Especially good for tank characters. You get someone like a Colossus or a Hulk who might start with more health and then they're meant to get in and take damage. Uh, this could be very, very good for them. What's nice is because you can trade traits around and stuff too. I believe 
I should definitely check on that before I say that. But I think you can trade traits between characters. Um, we have Agile. Discarding enemies, enter your zone. Immediately move one zone, ignoring enemies. So instead of a preemptive strike, this is a preemptive move. Um, to let you get a round. Uh, we have... Inspirational. Discard during your turn. Spend one power. Another hero within one range may immediately perform a free action. Um, so it's kind of cool here is it? Um, I always love this in regular zombie side. The ability to have one character that can kind of point to someone else. Hey, I need you to do this action. Because maybe they can have someone open a door. Um, and then now it's your turn. You can actually then not have to waste one of your actions doing that. What's really cool with this is because, um... It's not taking up one of your action, your uh, red, blue, yellow slot sport. Um, I was trying to see here if. Bystander. I don't see anything mentioning trading bystanders or. Um, traits. So you might not be able to. Um, I'm going to assume no, because I don't see anything specifically says I can. Uh, but again, your game, play how you want. We have tactical. Discard during your turn, spend one power. Select one zone within two range. All enemies in that zone activate and attempt to move towards your zone. Uh, so this is really a fun, it's a, basically a taunt ability. I love the taunt abilities. Again, like the tactical or inspirational. Um, it's an ability that lots of older characters had in their car, which is really fun. So I like the idea that anyone can now get it. Although the downside is they don't have it continuously because you have to use it once. But it also doesn't waste an action point doing it. Um, but yeah, getting to pull enemies towards you can be very helpful for getting them away from other enemies. Um, or like some of these missions where you have to take them off, like the Sentinel Hang or a specific object. Um, this could help bring them closer without having to wait for them to come to you. Uh, we have Tenacious. Discard after attacking, reroll any die. Always helpful if you're struggling. Guardian. Discard when enemies move into a zone within two range containing a bystander or a superhero. Move into that zone ignoring enemies. So yeah, it's so that you can move in and help them out. Very good for characters that have like reaction abilities. Like, hey, if they're in the zone, they get free attacks and stuff like that. Uh, resourceful. Uh, discard before attacking, gain one range. Um, this is interesting, but it also questions like, how does Wolverine get an extra range on his claws? Or how does, um, you know, how does someone do something? Which it's kind of a neat, just, very helpful ability. Mighty. Discard before attacking and spend one power. Roll three plus dice. Uh, or plus three dice. Hey, extra dice is very helpful. Uh, focus. Discard before attacking and add plus one dice. Dice results and ignore targeting priority for this attack. So, less dice than the other one. But you get a true huge target. So, you could really be like, oh, crap, there's a hero version in there. I really don't feel like trying to take out right now, but I could roll one extra dice and I could take out all the walkers or all the runners, um, which might be definitely more beneficial. All right, the last few we have is we have dash. Discard when moving, spend any amount of power to move that addi many additional zones. Get, get in, get out, very, very helpful. Uh, determine, discard during your turn, and spend one power to perform one free attack action. Uh, extra attacks, and then finally power up. Discard during your turn from one free power up action. Cool. So those are our traits, those are our tiles, those are our tokens. Um, so yeah, check back in for part three, and we will go over all of the miniatures. See you guys then. Bye.